Good afternoon, everyone. I have with me Robert Felix. You know him as the author of Not by Fire, But by Ice. He runs the website iceagenow.info, where you can find an enormous amount of information on our changing climate. In addition, he's also written the book Magnetical Reversals and Evolutionary Leaps, which is timely as well because the magnetic excursion on our planet. These two books alone will explain all of the changes going on on our planet at this moment in time. The intensification of the grand solar minimum, the cycles in our sun, the galactic cosmic rays, Birkeland currents, the electrification of our atmosphere, and the telluric currents on our Earth's surface, and how this is going to affect all of us. It is literally a reset button for society. Glaciers are growing. The biggest glacier in Chile is growing. The biggest glacier in Argentina is growing. Uh, glaciers are growing in the United States. And I've got a feeling that probably most people who are, are listening to this from the United States aren't even aware of that. But uh, uh, Mount St. Helens, if anybody remember Mount St. Helens, it uh, erupted, what, 1980, I think it was. But Mount St. Helens, before it erupted, was covered with, with huge ice sheets. And they, during the eruption, they melted almost instantaneously. And so you had, uh, you had huge floods running down the total Tootle River that included bulldozers and, and uh, trees, uprooted trees and, and melted ice, everything. Well, that was in 1980. Now, a new glacier has started forming inside, inside the crater. It's called Crater Glacier. And that glacier is now bigger than the ice was in 1980 when Mount St. Helens originally erupted. Uh, glaciers on Mount Baker in Washington State are growing. Glaciers on Mount Shuxon are growing. Uh, I've received word from somebody who, who lives near Glacier Peak that, that that is growing, the glaciers there. So there's a lot of, of answers that we're just not hearing the truth as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and I'd like to throw a number out there as well. You know, Antarctica with the vast, vast, incredibly large size that it is. How many temperature stations do you think are on that entire continent that they keep feeding us again and again? Oh, it's warming, it's warming, it's warming. 207. And that covers yeah, an area twice <laughs> as big as the United States. Oh, but they can get it within a tenth of a degree and tell you that it's, you know, oh, it warmed a hundredth of a degree. It's because of the underwater volcanic activity. I'll bet that all 200 of those stations are near the ocean. <laughs> so, so again, they're not getting a true, true picture of, of what's the truth. Yeah, and of course, uh, we used to have all sorts of temperature stations in the Soviet Union, but when the Soviet Union collapsed, why... Those stations stopped reporting, so we have to guess on what that is. And I think in Africa right now, uh, you know, the latest map that I saw shows Africa warming, and yet a different map from NOAA admits that they have, uh, they don't have the stations there. So, so yeah, it's all in interpretation, interpolation, based on whatever somebody wants the numbers to turn out to be. But you know. Sometimes I can't blame the scientists. You know, uh, the the state climatologist of Oregon, Oregon, uh, he he wouldn't tow the the global warming line, so he was fired. The state climatologist of Virginia wouldn't tow the global warming line, so he was fired. The state climatologist of Delaware wouldn't tow the global warming line, so he was fired. Well, if you're a young scientist just starting out and you've got a mortgage and you've got a, a wife and you've got or a husband and you've got uh, kids that you got to feed and you see that your boss got fired, I think you're going to learn to keep your mouth shut pretty quickly. So I, I'm, I don't call it a conspiracy. I, I, I guess I call it survival. I understand why they probably don't talk about global cooling as much as they should. There, there's a lot of people asking, you know, they should go to jail and they're finger pointing and this and, you know, these trials and all these. Well, okay. It's science. We need to kind of put that in the past and say that just didn't work because what's coming for us and our, yeah, our yeah. global civilization well, I, is about to reset in so many ways. 
it's truly at the point of resetting right now. And this is the main driver that they don't want to talk about because I think it would cause a global panic. Truly, it would. If you were to come out and talk about everything, and if every citizen on the planet knew as deeply as you and myself what is coming. And I don't agree with putting the, the scientists who are saying the other things in jail. I think that, you know, if you were if you were brought up in, in the last 40 years and going to school, that's what your teachers have taught you. And and you, you know, it's it's called, I think it's called confirmation bias. But once you believe something, then you you just see the confirmation. You know, I, I bought a Honda CRV. I had no idea how many there were until I bought one. And now every time I drive this down the street, I see Honda CRVs that I swear weren't there before. So, you know, we can blind ourselves very easily without it being a conspiracy. And uh, I'll wind up with one last point here. We've been talking about the magnetosphere and the electromagnetic connection from the Earth to the sun. There's one last little piece in there, the solar wind. The primer field on our sun is coming down into a phase state shift, which is going to stop our solar wind. It's going to come down to almost zero solar wind around uh, 2030 or so. And at this point, that's the missing factor that's going to cause our magnetosphere to even weaken and split and expand further than it would be. It's going to go to the weakest point and there'll be no solar wind pressure pushing it back on our planet to try to compress it in any way, shape or form. This is kind of the wild card here. The decline is not only going to be with the total solar irradiance with less TSI coming off. And, you know, the media focuses on TSI all the time. That is just one single tiny little piece of the entire equation when you're talking about effects from the sun on our climate. TSI, I don't even know if it has that much of an effect dropping temperatures. Perhaps, you know, some temperature drop, I'll agree, yes, but it's not the main driver. you got all the particulates in the atmosphere. you got the, just things changing all over the place. Cloud cover is increasing. You know, TSI will have its effect. But moving forward, what do you see as a timeline going out to these more major changes? Well, I remember first a uh, full-fledged radio interview about this. And I went on record as saying that we would be admitting within 20 years that we were in an ice age. Well, not many people are admitting that, and yet earlier I had mentioned uh, the astrophysicists, uh, uh, Piers Corbin out of London and Habibulu Abdusamatov out of, out of Russia, they are admitting that we are in a mini ice age right now. So I don't know how much, how, how, how soon this is going to happen, but I am, I'm very concerned about the next 10 years. So, yeah, your, your number of, of uh, 2024, I would not be surprised. Dr. Buzmatov's work, you know, Pokovo Observatory, they have that forecast that they put out with, this, with the solar cycles coming down. You know, the amount of sunspots, and John Casey's been talking about the same thing you are. A sea level's not going up. It's going to start decreasing, and along with the decrease in the sunspots, and there's a direct correlation of sunspots, solar activity, and the climate on our planet. And past cycles, population migration. Where are all these people going to move to this time? You know, in the Maunder Minimum, there were not nearly the amount of people. There was a, just a barely at a billion people on the planet. Now we have almost 8 billion. Where is everybody going to go to? Not everybody can run to the equator with their retirement savings. Countries are going to start locking their borders when this happens. They're not going to let people in. Even a little ice age is catastrophic. During the, the little ice age uh, in England, the rainy season, I mean, England didn't get covered with ice by any means, but the rainy season uh, persisted for two to three weeks longer in the spring. So farmers weren't able to plant until later. And then the rainy season returned two to three weeks earlier in the fall, and the crops were destroyed. Literally millions, and I, and I mean that, millions of people died of starvation. And... So I could foresee that happening again. There's not going to be as many people moving south as, as want to because they're, they're, they're not going to have the food. And yes, there's going to be those, those fights over the borders. That, uh, that wall that, that uh, somebody may build between the United States and Mexico, it may end up keeping people from the United States from moving to Mexico. I, you know, it's... Uh, it's a conundrum, and I do not know the answer. Uh, I, I do not advise waiting for your government 
whatever country you're living in, I do not advise waiting for your government to acknowledge the problem or to solve the problem. And Robert, just one last question. Greenland's growing in the ice, and you've seen the charts these last two years, the year before last record ice, 2016, with the ice mass budget on the surface increasing in ice. In your opinion, is this another indicator that it's turning cooler in some of the ice and the ice may, the ice gain is returning yes, back to some that's of the a initial pretty simple answer. Yes, I, I think we're seeing the beginning. Have. Well, that's a deep statement. And Robert, I thank you so much for your time. I've been wanting to talk to you for a while. And putting some of my videos up on iceagenow.info and I appreciate that to try to share the information and it all does come down to it you know the easiest explanation is the way to explain it I think we're on the same page on this and uh, the more we can do to get the word out I think the better it is all right and you've been listening to David Dubine and Robert Felix author of Not by Fire but by Ice and Magnetic Reversals and Evolutionary Leaps also, the website IceAgeNow.info with the latest following the changes in our climate, in the cooler weather that we're experiencing, and the other knock-on effect in our society. I appreciate your time, Robert. Thank you so much. Thank you, David.